So this video is part two of my driveway taxiway restoration project and what I'm going to be doing is an overview and some sped up footage of uh, me seal coating the asphalt. So here's a couple images of the asphalt after I filled in all the cracks uh, that I did an overview in part one uh, using a couple different products, Aquafault and some crack filler. Uh, as you can see, the asphalt is really faded. I don't think it's ever been sealed and it's it's really probably needed to be replaced. Uh, but I didn't want to spend the money, many, many, many thousands of dollars to rip it up and replace it. So I decided to just fill in the cracks and the holes and seal coat it. Uh, so the process before you put the seal coat down is to clean it. Uh, I used a heavy-duty degreaser and a pressure washer. Nothing real technical. Um, this is the sealer that I chose. It was the cheapest. This is the squeegee I used. Uh, it's a 24-inch I got from Lowe's. Uh, again, nothing technically difficult here. It's just the labor. So in this video, you can kind of see that the instructions for this particular product are when you lay it out, you're supposed to turn the buckets upside down. And that's just to let any settling that might have occurred um, kind of help mix the product. So you let it sit upside down for a little bit until you're ready to go. Then I used a paint mixer uh, just on the end of my drill to stir it up. I did about 30, 45 seconds for each bucket. Um, the instructions again for this particular product, um, just sort of a helpful tip. They say go ahead and prepare a bunch of buckets in a row so you can just keep going. Um, so I did that. I, in this video, I did three, um, three five gallon buckets uh, to get me started. And then you pour it out and you just start squeegeeing it around. Now, of course, all the videos that I watched previously were of much better quality asphalt. Um, mine was very, very, very rough, and it is soaking up the sealer like there is no tomorrow. Um, so I'm having to really squeegee hard because the, the surface is so rough uh, to keep from just putting a really, really, really thick coat on to the asphalt. Uh, again, the instructions for this product, they say it's better to do two thin coats than one thick coat. I couldn't do that. Uh, it was so rough, my squeegee wasn't actually pliable enough to get down between the cracks and squeegee it out. Uh, so it was a lot of work. I started out using rubber gloves to keep the sealer off my hands. Uh, and, and I was doing so much squeegee work uh, that I switched to just some uh, cheap leather gloves to protect my hands a little bit better uh, from <laughs> the blisters I was getting from the, uh, the squeegee. So just a little tip there. But as you can see, you just sort of, you get a, you get a sort of a, a pile of the seal and you just kind of work it back and forth. And then as it starts to settle down, you sort of squeegee it back off so it, you don't get too thick of a coat. If it is too thick, it will crack and it just doesn't look as good. Um, and it also, depending on your temperatures and some other stuff, it won't dry properly. Uh, this particular product, and it seems pretty universal for most of the asphalt sealers, is they want a fairly warm day. And warm day, they, you know, basically 65 or higher. Uh, they, they say you, if it's under 55 overnight, um, if, it's, if it gets under 55 degrees, that can cause problems. And you need to wait until the asphalt heats up before you uh, start this process. Um, the day I laid this, it was in the low 80s for me. It, uh, the, the night before, it had gotten into the mid-60s, so I had no issue. It was not drying too fast, and it was, but it was sealing and, and warming up enough to that it was drying properly, I believe. Um, I, I don't think I would want to go too much later in the year. Uh, this is September. Um, and I'm in South Carolina. So uh, if you're up north, you probably need to do this in the summer uh, so that it stays warmer. Uh, I don't think you'd want it glaring hot because it'll dry too quickly while you're doing this, um, especially with, in my situation where I had to really squeegee the, uh, the sealer out of the, uh, the roughness of the, the texture of the asphalt. So again, it's, it's, it's not technically difficult. It's just moving the product back and forth and then pulling the excess off of the top to make it go a little further. 
my problem was this drive this asphalt driveway taxiway uh, as you can see on the right that's my hanger uh, so this is a uh, how i taxi out of my hanger um, but it's also my driveway for my cars and it, it uh it was really rough and it and it just uh it really needed a lot of a lot of product um initially i had calculated one bucket for uh 200 square feet and it ended up i had to go back and reorder another pallet of these uh these buckets i ordered another 20. Uh, i ended up with 35 five gallon buckets of the sealer uh, and that worked out to be about one bucket per hundred square feet now in my situation the sealer was really um, or I should say the asphalt was in really, really poor condition. So if you have a really good condition and you're just trying to seal it to make it look nice and to protect it from the elements, uh, I think the recommended uh, 250 to 400 square feet per bucket is probably more accurate. Uh, it just was not accurate for me. Uh, and I anticipated that uh, when I started this project. I just didn't quite overestimate it uh, enough. Uh, so I had to take a stop, order another 20 buckets, and uh, and then start again after it took about three days for me to get the, the product. So a, f a few more instructional sort of things for this product is uh, uh, they don't want you to, uh, to have rain happen within 36 hours of you applying it. I think that that's a extra safety margin to allow for cooler temperatures. Um, I had a couple of days in the 80s, uh, but really this product in, within about 18 hours, 24 hours, I imagine it would have been fine if it had rained. Um, partly just we had a bright, sunny, clear day. It's why I chose to do it. We had a whole week and a half without any rain at all. Uh, so it worked out really well. Um, but you need to pick it you need to pick a time where you're going to have a couple of days where you're pretty sure it's not going to rain because you don't want to mess up your work uh it, it says that you can uh walk on it after four hours again that's very temperature dependent i think i could have walked on mine after an hour and a half uh it dries fairly quickly when it's in the 80s again if it was in the 70s i think that uh you know it would take a little longer so if you want to do a second coat, you do it thin, you wait four hours, and then you can do a second coat. Uh, again, it's temperature dependent. On a hot day, you could probably wait an hour or two and, and start working on a second coat. Um, it turned out that mine was so thick um, because of the roughness of the asphalt. Uh, I did one coat. It was thicker than I would have liked. Uh, obviously, it used a lot of product, as I've mentioned. Um, but it turned out pretty well. I had a few areas where I had some cracking, but the asphalt was in such poor condition. I, th I thought it was just looked fantastic when I was done. Uh, it really, it really made the asphalt look like uh, a new, a new product. So here's, here's a before picture, uh, grass and all faded. And here's a, an after picture. So as always, uh, like, comment, subscribe. It helps out the channel and I really appreciate it. Uh, I'm going to have a part three video coming out where I'm going to do some decorating, putting in some lighting and some striping and some other things. So stay tuned for that. Thanks again.